Hello physics students. Today we're going to be doing what I call Gauss's Law Lab 1. So at this point you should have printed out some of this document that is in the Google Classroom stream as a PDF file. Printing out pages 1 and 2 is optional. You don't have to do that. Those are just the instructions, but if you would find that more convenient, go ahead and print those out. Printing out pages 3 through 6 though is uh, essential. Well, if you don't have a printer, then you could try and recreate this by hand. It'd be pretty tedious. But as you can see, we got a place to uh, measure our data. And then we've got a graph. We're going to create a graph. And then, of course, places for calculations and answering questions at the end. So, as you know, Gauss's law is used most often to measure electric field or to calculate or derive electric field around certain charged objects. So if we had an experiment testing Gauss's law, we would have to somehow measure electric field. But that's actually kind of difficult, and we don't have any equipment here at our high school to measure electric field. But what we do have is equipment to measure voltage. This here, uh, we used it already in the electric field mapping lab. It's called a uh, a multimeter because you could turn and set it to different settings and we're going to turn it to this setting and then it'll be a voltmeter. So it'll measure voltage or potential around a series of charged objects. The objects we're going to be studying, you may remember we used these boards uh, of a different shape when we were doing the mapping lab. It's this kind of special conductive paper, and this time what I've drawn is a circle within a circle. So you see a small conductor, this is like special ink that conducts electricity, so we got a small conductor here, and then we've got a larger conductor. Now, you might be thinking that, oh, round things, we're studying spheres. And it turns out that we are not studying spheres because this paper forces the electric field to radiate stuck in a plane. It doesn't allow it to radiate this way or this way. Like in the case of a sphere, the electric field radiates all out in three dimensions from a point uh, spherical symmetry. But what the paper does is effectively create cylindrical symmetry. As I said, electric field radiating outward but not in the, uh, out of this plane is cylindrical symmetry. And so what I have is this inner circle is actually the cross-section of a conductor that passes right through this piece of paper. Some of it goes below, and it's, we consider it infinitely long. And then out here, this is just like a cutout. I didn't put the whole circle out here because then it would cover up this cylinder. But we've got a larger cylinder surrounding it, and of course that larger cylinder also passes underneath. So we've got a large cylinder, and inside of that a small cylinder, and they're coaxial. This, if you remember when we were studying uh, Gauss's Law Cylindrical Symmetry during those class notes, I showed you this cable, which is called a coaxial cable. So let me see, sometimes the focus is a little difficult here, so maybe if I go like this, it'll help it focus on the on the cable here close up. So as you can see, there's a copper wire on the inside here. So that is um, the inner conductor, and then it's surrounded by a white insulating material. And then on the outside, we actually have three conductors, a foil on the inside, a wire mesh, and then another layer of foil, and that's all covered by a piece of rubber. But when these three conductors connect or touch each other, they actually become effectively one conductor. So there's our one cylinder, a small cylinder inside of a larger cylinder. As I said, what we have here schematically. Okay, so that's what we're studying, coaxial cables. So we're going to charge the two cylinders up and then we're going to measure voltage around and then see what we could learn about the charge involved and the um, electric field. So uh, let's have a closer look of the equipment I have over here. Okay, so I have everything more or less set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you all the way through step four where we disconnect the equipment and return it to its original position. I'm not going to read through this because you know, I'm going to be doing it for you. So you don't need to hear the instructions. You'll just basically see the results of that. So I have here uh, my inner conductor. 
I have it connected to this power supply on the negative terminal over here. So that wire goes here, so this inner conductor is going to be charged negative. And the positive wire here goes along here and connects to the outside conductor. That means that this will be positive. So I have, I'm ultimately going to have negative lambda, a certain charge density coming out here, a coulombs per meter coming out of the board here, and another lambda in the positive coming out of the board here uh, uh, by the same charge density. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this up so that there's a 20 volt difference between these two cylindrical conductors. So I'll plug my power supply in here and I'm going to turn the meter on to measure voltage as I mentioned already and right now if I measure the see one of these volt wires from the voltmeter is going to the inner conductor and the other one's going to go to the outside conductor so we're me measuring not V which is the voltage from infinity we're measuring delta V from one conductor to another along this path. So I'm going to turn, as the instructions say, up to 20 volts. Now, in, when I assign you all data, I might give everyone different voltages. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to change these. So you may have a different voltage than 20. But as you could see, right now, this voltmeter is registering 20 volts between the conductors, which is what I want. So then the procedure says that I have to measure the voltage along this line over here. And these um, uh, grid marks uh, are at centimeter marks. So I don't need a ruler here to measure at radius of 0 0.01 meters, in other words, one centimeter, because this is radius zero for both conductors. And then if I go to radius one centimeter, that's right here on the edge of this inner conductor. So I'm going to measure the voltage at that location. And as you could see, there's no voltage difference. Of course, because there's no displacement, I am on a conductor. I'm measuring from one part of the conductor to another. And as we know, all conductors in e uh, static equilibrium are an equipotential. So that means there's zero volts for my first entry, okay? Now I'm going to go to two centimeters away over here. So again, this is one centimeter. Here is two centimeters. I'll touch this here. And basically I have, it's kind of varying a little bit, but let me see if I could get a nice good contact. Maybe 6.6. Oh, 6.8. Oh, wow. Moving around a lot. Now 6.9. All right, maybe 6.8. It seems what it's fluctuating about at. So I'm going to enter 6.8 here. But of course, you're going to wait, uh, or you're going to look up in your uh, in the Google Stream. There'll be a document that has everyone's name in it, and then there'll be a column of data under your name, and so you'll get your particular voltages. Okay. So now, of course, I go to three centimeters, four, five, six, and on up. So radius one, radius two, radius three, right there. And I see about 10.1, looks like it's lingering most around 10.1. So I will write 10.1 in the next slot right here. Again, you're going to get your own data from the sheet, Google Sheet. So now I'm going to go to four centimeters. One, two, three, four, right there. Looks like I got about 12.6. It's lingering most on, so I will write 12.6 right here. Okay. And then at five centimeters, so here's one, two, three, four, five, right there. Looks like we're at 14.7 voltage. Now it'll be a good idea to remind you that what that means, with this being negative, the electric field points in toward the negative conductor. And then voltage delta V is negative the integral along this path. So that means if I integrate electric field along this path, starting here, 
and ending here, I get neg a positive 14.7 volts integrating EDR from one centimeter radius to five centimeter radius. And that is positive because if the electric field points this way, I'm going like uphill against the electric field. I'm going to a higher voltage. Okay, so just a reminder of what, what, what that is along that path. So well, let's measure what the integral would be at the six centimeter mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. And I get about 17.5, okay, volts. And then I'm going to go to seven centimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh-oh, you know what I did? I think I skipped six, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there we go. Six is actually 16.3. So let me fix that. And the 17.5 that I measured before was actually at the seven centimeter mark. So there am I. And I have two more to go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine right here, 19.4. Okay, so I'll fill that in. And then I got my 19.4 right here. And then the nine centimeter voltage, well, that's one, two, three, four, the nine right here on this inner edge right here. And you see I've got 20 volts. Well, sometimes shows 20.1, but well, maybe, maybe the power supply drifted a little bit. Yeah, looks like the power supply drifted a little bit. Let's just say 20. Yeah, there we go, because that's uh, the full path all the way out. So there are my voltages. Now what we need to do is get these radii of these conductors too. Now, technically we could use this grid, but I'm going to go get a ruler and just do, do it a little bit more accurately. Okay, so easier to measure the diameter. And that is actually pretty close to one centimeter. So the R of the inner conductor is we could say 0.01 meters. And here I need the units because here the units were for me on the top of the table. Okay. And then the outer conductor, what I want to do, the instructions say to the inner side of it. So uh, what I'm going to do is put this ruler, well, maybe I could fit it here. The bolts are a little bit in the way. So the diameter looks to me like about um, 19.2, I guess. But I'm not quite at the diameter because of the bolt. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, I see 19.2. So that's going to be uh, 9.6 centimeters, or we could write 0 0.096 meters, okay? So, yeah, I guess that's it. So that's the data, okay? Now, let me just say... Once again, I have taken you through step four, and I'm going to, of course, clean up because you're not here to help me. So I'm going to do that, right? Uh, and then now look at the data analysis, five, okay? If you look at the data sheet, notice the graph is step eight, nine, 10, 11. So what you have to do is skip this, these we come back to the graph. I put them here because I wanted it next to the data table so it'd be more convenient than flipping. But really, you skip this and you start doing data analysis five instruction here on the second page of this data sheet, which is actually page four in the PDF document. So notice here you got five and six. And then look, 
We've got 12 over here, so pay attention here to these numbers because then when you complete 5 and 6 in the data analysis here to pay steps 7 through 11. So now you skipped, but you go back to this page for 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then you move on 12, 13, starting here again. So just keep in mind that the lab sheet, the calculations are out of order just to make this close to the, the graph, close to the... Uh, the, the, the uh, data table. Now, the rest of the lab, I'm not going to show you in detail how to calculate because uh, I actually devoted a lot of class time to this lab. So we have um, the day you're watching the video is one period, and then the next double period, two days from now, we'll have a whole period for you to work on this analysis, maybe even more than a whole period. So what I'll do is I'll stay signed in in the Google Classroom stream and, uh, or, or uh, into the Google meeting. And then if you have questions on following these instructions here, you know, for the data analysis, then you just come back to the meeting and I'll help you through anything. But basically it's described there. And again, if you have trouble, come back and I'll help you. So that's the data collection of Gauss's Law Lab 1. Okay, so good luck with the calculations. And I'll see you in the next lab, Gauss's Law Lab 2.